Welcome to the latest notes from the control tower. And in this episode, I'll be offering some thoughts on power, weight, and acceleration in the game. Hello there, and on the tarmac outside my hangar is the subject of my latest full review video, the BF109Z Swilling. And if you've watched that video, you'll know I decided to emphasize speed in this aircraft because of its relatively short boost duration compared to the other tier seven heavies. Well, thinking about speed got me thinking about factors affecting speed and also related attributes such as power, weight and acceleration. And that's going to be the topic for this video today. Let's deal with acceleration quickly first, although we'll come back to it later as well. Is it the thing in the game? Well, clearly it is. If we look at airspeed here, we can see that we've got some effects, bonuses. Acceleration without boost has been improved by 19%. Acceleration with boost activated has been improved by nearly 17%. And these are coming from uh, things like uh, bonus equi bonuses on equipment and also pilot skills. Well, that's great. But what's the base figure? And there's the catch. Nobody knows what acceleration figures are for any of the aircraft in this game. They're not available in the hangar UI. And for those of you who aren't aware, there's an application programming interface for World of Warplanes, which has been sadly neglected for at least five year years. And I can't find acceleration figures in that either. So we're a little bit stuck. We know that we've improved acceleration, but we don't actually know where we started from. Well, we'll touch on acceleration again a bit later. What do we know about other factors in the game, power and weight? Let's talk about power first. And if we pop into upgrades, we can see that the engine slot here is filled by, as it happens, a, a, a Umo 213E1, and there are two of them. This is the specification for just one of the engines, and it shows that the power is in horsepower 2050. So we've got some information about power. That's good news. Unfortunately, there's not good news coming up. I happen to have set the aircraft, uh, sorry, the game into metric mode is not the mode I normally run in. And if we go into Imperial mode and apply, you will probably expect to see that the power may have changed. Well, it's still measured in horsepower, but it's now 4,519. Okay, fine. So horsepower in the um, Imperial system is different to that in the metric system. Well, yes, it is, but it's not different in this way. In fact, an imperial horsepower, or as it's more commonly called, a mechanical horsepower, is actually a little bit bigger than a metric horsepower. Um, or if you want to turn it on its head, a metric horsepower is equivalent to about 0.984 of a mechanical horsepower. There is no way that you are going from 2050 to 4519 between the two systems. This appears to be an error in the game, so be aware of that. And very quickly, I'll just mention that this isn't a case of uh, the metric uh, system in the game showing the power for just one engine and the Imperial system in the game showing the power for both of these engines. I've done those maths. That's not the, the reason for the difference. Nevertheless, if we assume that the 2050 under the metric system, the metric horsepower, is accurate, and I have no reason to suppose it isn't, we can still go and do something with that figure and correct for the apparent error on mechanical horsepower as well. And we'll see what I've done with that uh, shortly. If that's power, what do we know about weight in the game? Well, within the game, nothing. We don't know about the weight of the airframe. We don't know about the weight of the engines. We don't know about the weight about anything. Fortunately, there is a website, which I have referred to before, and there you can find weights. So let's go and have a look at that. Here we are at the website gamemodels3d.com and this is the site where I get my auto aim angles, my dispersion angles and my overheat times from, although they're not always listed for every single gun. And I visited here in order to see if I could glean information about weight. Now there's a link to this site below the video if you're interested. However, I should warn you that if you want to look at high tier aircraft, you will need an account such as I have up here. And to create an account, you have spent, will have to spend a little bit of money. For consistency, I've brought up the BF109Z Zwilling, the aircraft that I was showing in the hangar earlier. And I've ticked all the top modules because I normally do my comparisons on top modules. And what happens if we click on a module? 
Now we get a dialog box up, let's just move it somewhere more convenient. And lo and behold, we can see a weight for the hull as it's described here. The A-frame is probably you and I would call it in English. And if we look at the engine, we can see that another dialog box comes up. And we also have the weight of the engine, probably in kilograms. And also we happen to have the power and that's consistent with the metric HP that was displayed in the game. So that's good news. We look at this weapon and we can see that the weight is 120. That's for one of these guns. There are two of them, so that would be 240. Similar sort of logic for the engine. 1,880 would have to be doubled because there are two of the engines. And who knew the Arsenal VB10 had two engines? I didn't until I looked at this website. And it's the same for this weapon, more weight. And you won't be surprised to learn that a 250 kilogram bomb, surprisingly, weighs 250 kilograms, at least in this game. Now that's the beginnings of some useful information. We can use that to calculate something called the power to weight ratio. But before I do that, let's just talk about weight. Throughout this video, I have so far used weight in the commercial, trade and legal sense. In a strict physical sense, I'm actually talking about mass. However, since engines are measured in horsepower and power to weight ratios are normally a way of expressing that uh, what that engine can do we're going to continue using the weight the term weight in the sense the physical sense of mass and please don't get me started on quantum mechanics and mass i've taken the weights from the games models 3d website uh, these are the figures for the Zwilling again, and as you can see, I've summarized them here. So the airframe, 4,980 kilos, added in the weights of the engines, the weapons, and the bombs, and produced a figure of 9,470 kilograms. Now, I've converted that into pounds here. That's not whimsical, even though I prefer imperial measures. Um, you'll see the reason for that in a moment or two. I've also got the power of the engines. There are two Yumo engines producing 2,050 uh, metric horsepower each, which therefore equates to a total of 4,100 metric horsepower. Why is that labeled PS, you might be asking? Well, the German term for horsepower is Pferdestärke, and I apologize for the mispronunciation there. Therefore, PS is an abbreviation. You'll often see in Europe CV as well, which I think is the Italian equivalent of the term. Now, I mentioned that each metric horsepower is about 0.984 mechanical horsepower, the imperial measure, so this figure is adjusted and is slightly lower as you would expect. However, to avoid any discussion of which horsepower am I using, I've converted it into an SI unit kilowatts, which is here. And this figure has been divided by the kilograms, and we have our first measure of power to weight, 0.3184 kilowatts per kilogram. Those of you, particularly in the UK and the US, I guess, who are more used to thinking about this from the other way around, that is how much weight do I have to remove to effectively gain uh, one more horsepower? We'll see a calculation here. And in, in effect, if I remove 5.1629 pounds from the Zwilling, I will effectively gain another horsepower. Well, what have I done with these calculations? Come here you'll see my familiar statistics spreadsheet. And if I scroll downwards, you can see I've added a new character, um, category, power to weight ratios, kilowatts per kilogram and pounds per HP. And there are those figures. Just excuse me while I zoom out and I'll show you um, the entirety of the sheet. Zoom up. And here we go. And we can see that with the color coding in place, the key 94-1 has the best power to weight ratios. Well, that's interesting because I don't really think of that as being a particularly quick aircraft. I don't think of it as being particularly quick to accelerate, but we'll discuss that in a moment. The second best is the XP-75 Eagle and the third best is the Swilling. Now let's just turn that on its head for a second. We'll actually look at this one. The Arsenal VB-10 has the worst in class figures. We'll just show that, there you go, bold red. And interestingly, it has a terrible climb rate. Well, climb rate is not just dependent on power, although clearly that's a factor. It's also dependent on wing loading, which is a completely different topic, which I'm not going to go into today. But it's not quite as clear cut as that. If we look over here at the Key 93, we can see that the power to weight ratios are slightly better than the DH-103 Hornet right next to it. However, the Hornet climbs ever so slightly faster. So there's more going on here than just power to weight to determine things like speed, acceleration, climb rate. So what else affects acceleration? Well, here we've got a partial list. Um, weight, 
uh, and there's a technical note here relating in inertia the loaded kinetic force stored and carried in the object mass well the reason we're talking about force here is because somebody's thinking about gravitation which we'll talk about in a moment kilowatts which you can see i've converted my one of my power to weight ratios into the kinetic power supplied propulsion force external forces such as gravitational well you've often heard me say in my full review videos when i particularly in the battle that i'm at the top of a turn when i'm going upwards and i want to go downwards and i say this isn't a gravity assisted turn well i believe it is and i believe that the world of warplanes team have implemented gravity in the game at least so far as the vehicles are concerned I could be wrong about that. I may just be assuming it. There's no indication anywhere to say that gravity is implemented in the game, but it seems logical to assume that it is. But just countering that, I'll just talk about deflection shots. And if you're not sure what a deflection shot is, that's when you point your guns um, in front of an aircraft that's banking away from you in the hope that you will fire far enough ahead of it in order to hit it. And that's quite an art in the game. And I'm not very good at it, particularly with big cannons that hide air aircraft. But here's the thing. Deflection in real life has to take into consideration gravity. The shells, the bullets, will fall as they travel towards their target. And therefore, you need to aim slightly above your target to account for the shells falling. That, as far as I can tell, is not a thing in World of Warplanes. In deflection shots, gravity is not a factor. So at least as far as that's concerned, gravity has not been implemented in this game. You line up your reticle, your gun sight, with the nose of your target and hope that you're far enough ahead to hit it. And if you get that right, you don't need to worry about your shells and bullets falling below the target. You don't have to compensate for that. Nonetheless, I still believe that gravity is implemented for the vehicles. Magnetic can affect acceleration. Magnetic forces, that's not going to be a factor in this game. Drag certainly is, and there is no information whatsoever available concerning drag in this game. But you have to believe that the World of Warplanes team have implemented drag in some form or fashion. And what that means is that you could have a hugely powerful aircraft, much more powerful than another aircraft in terms of um, its engines. But if it's got terrible drag figures, it may still actually accelerate worse than that other aircraft, and it may have a lower top speed. And if we come back to the spreadsheet, we can see that the top speed of the ME2, of, sorry, the um, Zwilling is actually, in at least in terms of cruise flight, faster than the Key 94-1, even though it has the best power to weight ratios. That would suggest to me that drag has been implemented in the game. Uh, logical to assume that it has been. Finally, we have something called Tribad. That's not a term I'd ever come across before. It's a new one on me, so I've learned something. That's great. Um, running surface, track, moving parts, friction. Well, I suspect this has probably not got any relevance within World of Warplanes, but this I will mention. In any propulsion system, there's not just acceleration of the vehicle. The parts of the engine have to be accelerated as well. So if you've got a big, heavy propeller, it's going to take longer probably to get that up to full speed and produce the thrust power in the end um, that you um, could expect from that engine. And I guess the same is true of jet engines as well. Um, they have turbines that need to be turned. So there's an acceleration of the parts within the engine to consider. I suspect that probably hasn't been implemented in World of Warplanes. But taking uh, these factors, we can see that at least some of them, possible gravity, probably, almost certainly drag, will affect your figures. And therefore, they will modify the effect of your power to weight ratios. All that said, I think these power to weight ratios are useful information. And for that reason, I'm going to be including them in my statistics spreadsheets from now on. Albeit that you have to remember that uh, drag and gravity can modify uh, these figures. However, they may indicate to you an aircraft which you should strongly consider for a speed build, which is what I ended up doing with the Zwilling. And had I known this information, I might have done that sooner. Alternatively, you may have a speed build on an aircraft and suddenly realize that in fact the power to weight ratios are horrible. Maybe you should reconsider that and build it for maneuverability, for instance, instead. Well, that got me rather excited. And it brought to mind an aircraft that I'm currently trying to get better in, the TS-8 Japanese premium fighter, the J-8M Shu Se. And I wondered what the power to weight ratio of that would be. Well, that took me down another avenue, as we'll see.
So now I've switched to another spreadsheet, this time for the tier eight fighters and the J8M is in columns A, C and A, D here. And I was excited to see the power to weight ratio. Well, of course, the J8M doesn't have a piston engine. It has a rocket engine and rocket engines and jet engines are measured in terms of thrust. And thrust has no direct equivalency to horsepower. Horsepower is work through time. Thrust is just a force. The two things are difficult to compare. And thrust is typically measured for an engine at least when it's on a static test bed. That means that you have to then consider if you want to try and compare horsepower and thrust, in which situation the thrust is being applied. Well, do you do it at takeoff when more power is needed to get the aircraft off the ground, therefore more thrust? Or do you do it when the aircraft is in cruise flight and thrust is probably 30% of what the engine can do? And that's not the end of it. I've ducked that issue and indeed you'll find most of the world ducks the issue as well. People don't tend to try and compare jet engines to piston engines and there's a fairly obvious reason for that nowadays. Certainly in a military context, most aircraft are jets or at least they're turboprops. That brings us to a consideration of what I can do here and basically I can produce the thrust to weight ratio and there's an interesting little aspect I need to explain here. Thrust is a force and it's measured in newtons um, which is the SI unit. That's appropriate. If we're getting into the area, a scientific area, we should use the SI unit. But we also need to convert the weight to Newtons as well. Well, weight is going to vary depending on where you are in relation to the Earth. If you're high up in the sky, your weight will vary, uh, be different to um, what it is at uh, surface level, sea level, if you like. Um, nonetheless, we can take um, the force that gravity exerts on the mass of the aircraft my terms carefully here which is about 9.8 newtons and 9.8 newtons is the equivalent therefore it certainly for me of one kilogram i've done that all in the background i haven't bothered to show you it on the spreadsheet the long and short of it is i've been able to produce a thrust weight ratio and we see that the j8m has 0.3937 and if we just scroll along now you'll see that for the other jet aircraft i have done the same i've also had to add in another category on my statistics spreadsheet in addition to power to weight ratios and that is thrust to weight and i'm not even going to try and compare for instance the la9 with the yak 15. i'm going to put, compare the yak 15 with the other aircraft that have jet engines or rocket engines such as the pata and the j8m and i also mentioned the vampire earlier and these will also appear on my statistics spreadsheets from now on. And they'll fulfill the same sort of role as the power to weight ratios. They may or may not indicate when an aircraft could benefit from a speed build. That brings me to the end of what I know about power, weight and acceleration within World of Warplanes. And as you can see, I've used what I know to add further information to my statistics spreadsheets. And you'll be able to see those uh, pieces of information from now on. If you know of other resources or you have knowledge about these hidden aspects of the game, please don't be slow in coming forward. I don't believe I've got the full picture and I'd love to know more and be able to share it with you. Well, I hope you found that helpful and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing out.